What's up, guys? I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for April 1st, 2024. It's April Fool's, and I don't have any jokes for you guys, but there might be some from Star Citizen. Uh, but yeah, 323 is starting its testing, and it's getting pretty interesting. And creatures are one of those interesting things that are coming to Star Citizen now. All that and more on today's Week in Review. And as always, if this is your first week in review, this is where I take all of the official Star Citizen news each week, combine them into one video, and share some of my opinions about it. I also live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash saltymike, starting at around 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And yeah, you guys have still been stopping by saying hello, and I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been really awesome, so keep that up. But we do have a lot to get through this week. We had two big evil patches, so let's jump into the patch updates. And we'll start out with Wednesday. We had a 323 Evocati patch, and I did make an entire video covering my experiences in detail on this channel. So the video will be linked in the description and up at the top right of the screen as well. So I'll quickly cover what the patch entailed. First and foremost, this was an early Evo build, which means many features are either non-existent, uh, there but not working, there but not ready for feedback, and just generally broken. This is normal for Evocati. This also means that the main focus of the patch is just general stability, not really the way it plays. So keep that in mind when we discuss any of this stuff. There was also a known issue that said the new distribution centers basically caused a crash, so you were unable to see them or quantum to them or anything during this specific build. With that said, this was also a patch where most of the things were added or changed were from the FPS team, but the patch was so unstable, it was quite difficult to see any of these changes in action and Arena Commander was turned off. Replication Layer appeared to work so well that it reproduced what players were doing to cause server crashes. So after it recovered, it created a loop of crashing again because it recovered what was crashing it. It was actually kind of cool. So it would appear for like 10 or 30 seconds after recovery, you would be able to play, and then bang, the server would start uh, crashing again. So it, once this started, the server was done and you couldn't play on it. it. The server stability was horrible on Wednesday. Things that were in and worked well, though, were basically three things. The new EVA is working nicely and, you know, kind of what we saw on, on I think, ISC a while back. And the experience is pretty good. Also, the Moby Glass is a nice improvement on what we had in the past, but appears to be not completely converted over to uh, building blocks or whatever they call it, right? With that said... The star map was in and it was functional, but it had a lot of weird quirks and this patch was so unstable I couldn't tell if it was the map that was causing the issues or the server. Uh, the mini map was in as well and it worked in some areas and not others. This was expected because the patch was so unstable and, you know, it didn't have too many places for you to go. So I couldn't tell where we had it and where we didn't. I could not find a freight elevator, hauling mission or see hostility changes uh, for reputation. These things were in, apparently, but not ready for feedback. Couldn't find them. They were impossible to even get a sense of where they were at because of the instability. The big thing that everyone noticed was the Moby Glass. There was a new mission in the Mercenary tab, and it was to collect Copian Horns, or Maroc Pearls. And there was another at the bottom to kill Copian. CIG uh, kind of let the cat out of the bag later in the video where they posted an Instagram, uh, like the Copian Dog, and the Morak, uh, which appears to be the birds. So this is, you know, anything. Like, everybody's talking about this. This is the big deal. It's like the distraction, almost, from reality in a lot of ways. Then on Friday, we had a 323 Evo patch, and it was much better in terms of stability. They planned on getting the patch out around noon my time, but didn't get it into our hands until around 8 p.m. on Friday, a day off for the company. So thanks to the team for getting it out. I appreciate it. Uh, now it was basically the Wednesday patch, but we were actually able to see some features except for the FPS changes, because again, Arena Commander was turned off. So like the Wednesday patch, I did a post uh, video like detailing everything. Again, it'll be up here. Uh, so check it out if you haven't yet. The highlights were the star map. It worked 
so much better. It was responsive, it was easy to use, and quantum travel just worked. The creatures, I was able to see both. The Copian are aggressive dogs that run in packs, uh, and the mission to collect their horns didn't work, but you could collect them. And the tooltip says they're used for rebuilding bone structure, so a crafting reference. Kind of interesting, and medical crafting at that. The Morak are birds and they're not aggressive, and they have a nasty ball in their mouth when you kill them, filled with, like, bugs and things. It's gross. These have a fetch quest as well, but no description for what they do. Then the distribution centers, they're large, and they're going to be the highlight of the patch in terms of visuals, locations, and things like that. I feel like you're going to have to go to them quite a few times before you have gotten bored or feel like you've explored the entire thing. Also, you can use Vulcan for the first time in this patch, but I don't think it was working that well and you had to turn it on via the config files, so I just stuck with DX11. And lastly, they did a polish on the water stuff from CitizenCon and the simulation is in, but I think the server couldn't really handle it or my computer couldn't. I don't know. It was weird. Outside this, the patch was more stable, but I'm hearing from other EVO members that stability has gotten worse over the weekend. So maybe the team um, kind of keeping an eye on things for a while is why I had a better experience. Regardless, a lot is still missing for the pat from the patch, basically. Namely, the hangar, the cargo experiences, reputation, and more. So get subscribed, and I'll keep you guys updated as best I can. Then we had Overdrive this week on live phase three. This is probably the worst experience of Overdrive yet for me. Uh, it was a miniature Xeno threat with a few hammerheads and a total of 24 ships that needed to be destroyed. Anyone on the server can take the mission if you completed the first two phases. It was often completed quite quickly and was very unexciting. Uh, like, I just basically couldn't wait to finish this one, so I didn't have to do it anymore, to be honest. And again, I always will do boring gameplay, you know, like the boring depends because if there was a good reason to do it, it wouldn't be boring. And one of those reasons in a game that like this one, I guess, could be just some storytelling or a good mission reward. And the mission chain is massively lacking in the story telling aspect. And we all know the mission reward is not that great either. And then Happy Triggerfish. So April Fool's Day in the verse is called Triggerfish. And this year we got a few goofy Arena Commander modes. Two Kill Collector modes, uh, and they're about the same as the old ones, but instead of collecting a coin when you, when you get a kill, it is a double dog. A holographic double dog, of course. Because why wouldn't it be holographic? And then the single weapon elimination is even crazier. It is with a toy gun but it fires rockets really slowly. It's super buggy, super jank, but it is hilarious and it's a good time. So check it out if you guys haven't yet. That's all I got for the patch updates. Again, we will be updating you guys as much as possible on the 323 stuff for whatever Evo patches come. Whenever it goes wave one, we're gonna be here for you. So get subscribed if you haven't yet and let's move on to the video updates. All right, we just had an Inside Star Citizen this week titled Vision Revision, and this show is all about the displays we see when we're in the first person, basically, and they start out with describing all of the information they feel should be shared with us. Of course, in a video game, you're going to need all that HUD information. You get information about your active status, your weapons, what you're holding. notifications, your missions, your comms, your chatting, everything like that is part of the visor and lens. Now, none of this is really new. It's just a new way of displaying everything we already had in the past, but in a better way, right? And I think this next clip gives the biggest change that came to the visor from our old experience. We've got regions all over the lens, and we can specify which widgets we show in them. For example, down the bottom right, we've got the weapons. We've got the control hints. And we've got low priority notifications, which can take up a lot of real estate. If something else shows on screen that would overlap one of those, it'll, one of the lowest priority ones will dynamically turn off and it'll all fit nicely onto screen again. Previously, all notifications were shown in the center of the screen, which could get a bit busy. We've now introduced the concept of low-priority notifications, 
which anything that's not super important to you will show in a box down in the bottom right of the screen instead of being loud and in your face. Another aspect of our dynamic widget system is that we can turn off specific widgets when, depending on what you're looking at. So if you've got your Moby Glass open, it can hide a lot of the widgets, maybe except for the notifications. If you're looking at a kiosk, maybe we just want to show the control hints on the right hand side and everything else can be easily hidden. So the main thing here is the ability to have the information displayed when it makes sense and hidden when it does not. Where right now it appears to be all or nothing with them. Then they speak about something that really excited me. Beyond 323, we'll be allowing artists to style things based on different visors and different missions and different purposes. The code for the different styles for manufacturers, etc., is in now. You can see the potential of having different visors for different helmets for these different roles. The next thing is to get the artist onto the job, really. In 323, the only specialized visor is going to be the combat visor that comes with the dynamic crosshair. But you can expect us to continue iterating on these visors in future patches. So with all their ability to show and hide widgets, they also are able to make unique ones for certain careers. Think a medical helmet, a mining one, one for salvage. The possibilities become endless. And if what one of the devs said happens, like all that's left is we just get the artists on it. Uh, well, it reminds me of when gameplay tech is created and all that is left is getting designers to make the game. I'm still waiting. So I, I hope this happens, but I won't be holding my breath. And then the new loot UI is next and it's better than I could have ever imagined. So the loot screen builds on a lot of work that we've done in the personal inventory over the past few years. It's a new UI giving the player the possibility to just pick up stuff on the go. The existing personal inventory can be a bit cumbersome when trying to pick up ammo in a firefighter and things like that. So the new loot screen aims to address those issues. Now when the player goes over to a body or a box, it, it can quickly press F and this will bring up the new loot screen. This menu is a simplified version of the player's loadout and the entity they are looting. You'll see the looted entity items on the top and the players on the bottom. You can easily swap between both and equip things from what you're looting by just clicking or clicking and dragging. This screen is a more simplified version of the inventory, is to make the experience for the player to be quicker. We also now have a separate section for armor, which wasn't a consideration for Squadron 42. You'll just click a button and it'll take you to a new page and you can swap your armor with who you're looting and see everything that they had equipped. We also have some contextual actions in the loot screen. If you are looking for ammo for a specific weapon, you can hover over that weapon and it will show you any magazines or attachments that will fit that weapon. You can then quickly loot those or attach the weapon attachments using that menu. So when the player hovers a specific item, this will appear a tooltip that will tell you the available actions and that will include, for example, a single click to equip, a shift left, left click to store it. We've also added a button to the loot screen to swap between that and the existing personal inventory view. The inventory will stay, it's not going anywhere, uh, and is more for your management. So what you're seeing here is still, uh, the visuals are still for Squadron. We are planning to do a PU version and that will come for this release. Now that was easily one of the longest clips I've ever shared, but everything was important here. Uh, the first bits are old news from Citizen Con, but the armor screen is brand new and the contextual hints are awesome. I love the ammo hints. I do hope they eventually get rid of the old third person UI personally. I don't understand the need for it, even with the management in mind. And lastly, I'm looking forward to Star Citizen versus Squadron 42 versions of this art because it should be cool. The blue holographic will be a thing, I'm sure, because, yeah, everything is. And then last and kind of least is the shopping UI. And our team's last big addition to 323 is an updated shopping experience. So today, when you're looking to buy an item, you look at that item and you see a flat piece of UI on the left-hand side of the screen. You then need to interact with this item. And if the price is high enough, it will take you to a confirmation screen in the Moby Glass that shows you more information where you can confirm if you want to proceed with the transaction. With the new Moby Glass being introduced, we took this as an opportunity to remove 
the old confirmation screen and update some of the UI around the shopping experience. We really wanted to sell the idea of the AR lens actually putting things out in the world. You will see the overlay around the item with basic information. Uh, you will see the price of the item and your balance. We're no longer going to be directly interacting with the item to purchase it. We'll now have hotkeys that will be displayed on the card. We need to press these hotkeys for a certain amount of time in order to complete the transaction. This one frustrates me a tiny bit. I think buying and selling experience in Star Citizen is one of the least polished things that we have. And sadly, this doesn't really improve on it greatly. I do like the hold B to buy, but that's the only option. And I can't mouse wheel to buy a lump sum. I don't get much in the way of stats. This seems to be an immersion thing way more than a functional thing. And then there was no Star Citizen Live this week because it's a holiday weekend uh, and the entire studio should have been on holiday, but we did get a few that worked pretty hard on 323. So thank you again for that. But with that said, let's go into the other updates. All right, and as always, we start out with a sneak peek, and this is absolutely a kiosk, but from where I can't tell, and from, from what I can tell, the community isn't sure either where this one resides. Is it in our hangar? Is it in a distribution center? Is it a cargo deck? There's tons of speculation around this one, which is awesome. So leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think, and I can't wait to interact with these wherever they are. And then the Galactopedia had an update this week and it was pretty basic. The main article was on the Banner Protectorate, which is the name for the Banu civilization, basically. And then the side articles were mostly about systems that were seized by the Vandal from the UEE. The two main systems discussed are Tiber and Caliban, and there's some cool stuff there, so feel free to check it out. And then we had a ship sail sneak peek. You guys all clued me in that this could be called the Raptor because of the sneak peek description from last week. And some people thought it was a like wheel and others thought it was a ground vehicle. I, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, but that's all we have this week. So very exciting week. A lot of Evo stuff. I, uh, I said again, and I will say it again. Yeah, we're going to keep you updated on that. And uh, I asked you guys if you like those videos. You really seem to. So we're going to keep doing stuff like that. I've been wanting to do more smaller updates here and then culminate everything into Week in Review. So let me know here in the comments how you feel about me sharing, kind of doing the Week in Review, but also sharing more news about certain patches and things like that that are going on during the week. So once again, thank you for watching. Happy Easter. Happy April Fool's. Happy Triggerfish. And I will see you guys next week. <laughs>